let's look at this model. On uh, this side of the mouth, uh, the teeth are all nice and healthy, and the gum tissue is also quite healthy. Uh, the model represents an, an adult. Uh, the teeth are all permanent teeth. But when we turn the model around, the other side is meant to show some common uh, dental diseases that could occur due to uh, bacteria in the mouth. So before I even open it up, you can tell that the gums are red and inflamed uh, and that there are dark areas representing a decay in teeth. Um, and uh, you can see enamel has uh, fractured away in uh, some of the teeth. Uh, there are even some missing teeth on the model and shifting of teeth. Uh, in this case, the upper tooth has shifted down into uh, space uh, below uh, that otherwise would be occupied by a lower tooth. When a tooth is severely decayed, for instance, this upper tooth that has a large cavity and a lot of broken area, uh, or the one behind it, the bacteria uh, will reach the pulp of the tooth and then uh, some serious uh, dentistry has to happen to try to save the tooth. Okay, looking at uh, this model, this is the one uh, in which part of the jaw has been removed so we can see the nerve and blood vessels. And uh, remember this is uh, a, a, a child about 11 to 12 years old that still um, has some permanent teeth to come in. On the first uh, permanent molar, uh, the front of the tooth has been removed. So the equivalent of this part has been removed, including uh, the front part of the root, so we can see the interior of the tooth. Coming through the bone are nerves and blood vessels that enter through a little opening at the end of the root and the nerves and blood vessels come up into the pulp chamber of the tooth. This is true for any tooth regardless of the number of roots. If we're dealing with a tooth that has severe decay like we saw in the previous model, so for a moment if you'll just imagine that uh, there's a lot of decay right here and that the decay has extended down very close to or inside of the pulp chamber, you'll realize that this living material has become infected. When bacteria get into the pulp chamber, uh, the tissue becomes uh, very inflamed, uh, it becomes infected, and it will initially be extremely painful. When a person has an acute toothache, that's often what's going on. If it's left untreated, the decay will continue to destroy parts of the tooth, but this pulp will die completely. And when it dies, though, uh, it's loaded up with bacteria, and the bacteria and uh, the remnants of the pulp drip out of the end of the tooth and into the bone. At that point, an abscess begins to form in the bone down here at the ends of the roots. When the abscess forms, that can be extremely painful. Abscesses can eventually break to the outside of the bone, so the outside of the bone would be here, and they'll uh, show up as uh, a little swollen area uh, that's soft and uh, will uh, begin to ooze pus. If a tooth has become abscessed, a couple of uh, treatments could be done. The simplest thing would be to remove the tooth. But uh, then uh, you will have an empty space and um, you might have shifting of the teeth either behind or above uh, the empty space. The other option would be a root canal. 
and a root canal could be done uh, even before an abscess occurs uh, as long as uh, the uh, uh, tissue in the pulp is uh, in the process of dying uh, or if it's dead then a root canal uh, would be a possibility. Now the term root canal refers to the little canals that come up through the roots and that's a passageway through which the blood vessels and nerves travel into the pulp chamber. What the procedure root canal means is to come into this pulp chamber and that would be accomplished by coming in through the crown of the tooth. Okay, often there's a big cavity here to begin with but um, it would be uh, widened and opened up enough so that this part of the top of the tooth would be removed and you would be able to see directly into the pulp chamber. Then the uh, dying or dead material would be scooped out of the pulp chamber and then using a series of very tiny files the diseased tissue in the root canals themselves would be removed. Once that's accomplished that removes the source of infection. There's nothing left to drip into the bone to either set up a new abscess or to uh, keep a current abscess going. When the pulp chamber and the root canals are clean and free of debris, which may take more than one dental visit, then the dentist will fill up the root canals with a non-reactive material and literally seal them so that you can't get a backflow from anything that might be going on in the bone. So then if there's any fluid that's inflamed or infected down here uh, it's not going to have any place to flow back up and set up a new infection. So the root canals are filled and the pulp chamber is also filled with a non-reactive substance. Then the, the tooth is rebuilt and almost always that would require putting a cap which is also called a crown on top of the remaining part of the tooth. At this point the remaining part of the tooth is uh, very weakened and fragile um, it was weakened to begin with because of uh, decay and then uh, often uh, extra tooth has to be removed so that the dentist can get access into the pulp chamber. So a filling would not hold. A filling would simply uh, break loose and would not uh, really uh, fix the crown of the tooth at all for any length of time. So uh, the uh, better answer would be to put a crown, which as described before, is like a little hat that would come over the top of the tooth and hold uh, the remaining part together. Um, if a uh, root canal and a crown are done uh, properly, um, the treated tooth could remain in the patient's mouth uh, for the rest of their life. 